Welcome to a special edition today, guys. We have a, a super, super treat. We have my friend and one of my personal mentors, Andrew Forbes. This man has managed millions of dollars. At the age of 26, he was managing a $31 million portfolio. Super Wall Street guy. Just one of the best guys you can ever meet. And um, without further ado, let's bring Andrew in and let's get talking about financial education. Awesome. Hi, David. Happy to be involved. Uh -huh. We're very, we're very happy to have you here, my friend. So um, just kind of tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Why should we, you know, trust what you say? Sure. Uh, I'm Jamaican. I'm a Jamaican-American. <laughs> um, and in the Caribbean, the mantra is um, go to school and get a good education. After all, knowledge is power. So early on, my parents sent me to a prestigious high school called Monroe College. It was yeah. founded in 1856. I mean... It's actually older than the Breitling watch, if you believe it or not, <laughs> which I wear. Um, and uh, I went to this private school. We got a collegiate level education because it was called Monroe College, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, finished that high school and went to New York for another year of high school. Then on my way to college because we needed to do the SATs and all that stuff. So I, I attended SUNY Albany, uh, got a fintech dual major. Believe it or not, before fintech was actually an industry. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Um, and I worked now, with now well, fi go fintech, ahead. Sure. financial technology. Just to absolutely yes. So I have a finance degree and an information technology degree. So I was doing website programming, all that good stuff, as well as you know finance courses. Yeah. And it actually grew to be something I really love. And that's where I'm focusing on today. Um, and I, I worked with a Wall Street broker dealer for about a decade, like you talked about, managing uh, 31 million at the peak of my asset management and over, uh, I think, 30 million in death benefit in life insurance as well. So I guess that's a combined book value of like 60 million. But Seriously. regardless, yeah, I mean, but it, regardless, I think the lessons I got along the way were far more important. Um, for example, now I moved to independence so that I can give any uh, recommendations or suggestions uh, that a person can actually implement as opposed to being limited to only what I bring in my toolbox. I didn't want to do that. I think it's a lot better that way. Yeah. And of course, since I'm representing my own brand, I mean, a name like Forbes isn't too weak for anyone to put up anywhere, right? Yeah, so, I might have heard of it. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and so financial education became my focus uh, more because I started to study the greatest people out there, the greatest minds or the icons, as you'd call them. And that's why I was able to suggest all these books to you. I mean, I have a library of books that is extensive, my friend, and I've read most of them, but I also don't read something that doesn't interest me. So if I pick it up and it's not interesting, I'll put it back down and maybe later it'll be more interesting and I'll, and I'll listen to it then. Yeah. And, you know, looking back, you can connect the dots as Steve Jobs would say, you know, you, 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 hindsight is twenty twenty. So you won't know while you're doing something the benefit until after in a lot of cases. Yeah. And many of these people, you know, they emptied their bank accounts and their books and uh, their bank accounts of their mind using books. They put a lot of money into that stuff. Yeah. Ben Franklin, people like uh, King Solomon, for example. Yeah. I mean, why is this man on, on earth self-proclaimed or everybody else says it? Nobody disputes that one. <laughs> um, Sir John Templeton, this guy is known for taking $10,000 and buying 100 stocks uh, in a recession uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. And believe it or not, he bought 104 to be exact. You, how many of them do you think made money when it started recovering? Just take a wild guess. I mean, this, seems like, this sounds like an amazing story, so I'm going to say 104. <laughs> a 100 of 104. <laughs> wow. Believe it. And this guy rose to stardom after that. Mm. Uh, this is a guy that Tony Robbins even speaks about. He personally knew him before he died. Um, and there's so many. I mean, Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio is personally probably my favorite. David Swenson, Lee Kuan Yew, who built Singapore from nothing to something. Mm. I'll throw in an amazing women, woman in there since uh, women are rising today. Mary Erdos from J.P. Morgan. Yes. Uh, she's in charge of $2 trillion, my friend. <laughs> That's more than many, many countries. <laughs> and of course, let me throw in a Jamaican, Michael Lee Chin, you know, extended distant relatives. You got to throw in those people. He's a Jamaican <laughs> billionaire. Um, in fact, his son might be happy to see this. I'll send him the, the recording after. Michael Jr., actually. Nice. Okay. I'll tell you, man, in life, I mean, 
people need to realize that the path is the goal. You know, you have to find your life's calling, whatever it is, and do what makes you happy and also produce, you know, finances for you as well. So tell us something we might not know about Andrew. I mean, is there like a certain skill that you do? I mean, you know, what makes Andrew happy? What's one of your hobbies? I love to dance, man. I remember in college, there's this uh, place called Sneaky Beats, and they would always yeah, have a I know reggae Sneaky night. Beats. Yeah, you yeah. know Sneaky Beats, okay. <laughs> so me and my friends, we would literally own that dance floor. I mean, literally. I think they probably still have videos up somewhere of us doing the step out by busy signal or any any sean paul video you know we used to just take over that place uh, that was one of my greatest joys something i think i should do a lot more of well andrew we're having a lot of fun um right now we're going to pause for a quick commercial break so please don't go anywhere we're going to talk a lot about financial education need to know information see you guys in a second Welcome back, guys. So now we're going to get into some heavy-duty financial education with Andrew Forbes. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. He's managed millions of dollars before in his lifetime. Now he has his own independent independent agency, and he's killing it, living out in Miami. Very approachable. If you need help with anything, just a question. He's the type of guy that he doesn't even know you. He'll, he'll answer you. He'll help you out to the best of his abilities, which is extensive. So, Andrew, <laughs> let's talk about... Um, why are so many Americans, why do so many Americans struggle with financial education? Well, education, especially financial education, is not a priority here. I mean, um, in education, we rank in the bottom tier amongst countries with first world economies. Deep. So that's, that, I believe, is the main reason. Singapore is so small, but yet financial education is a forefront of building the infrastructure that's there. I mean, this is one of the greatest stories from third world to first. Lee Kuan Yew built this country 35 years to be in one of the best countries out there today. I've visited Singapore. Marina Bay Sands is amazing. I love that place. They even have a Formula One racing done at night on the streets there. They close it down because they're so efficient. Imagine doing that in New York City. No. <laughs> Oh, man. So now tell us, traditional 401ks versus new age 401ks. I mean, you, you know, you and I have personal conversations where you tell me that, you know, you don't believe in them. I mean, what's wrong with these new age 401ks? Sure. Well, old school pensions, um, the plans your grandparents, my grandparents had, my dad personally, I'm working on his pension now. Um, they put all the risk on the employer to take care of you. Yeah. So normally a big, strong life insurance company is hired to take care or underwrite, as they say, the risk of putting you know, a retirement plan in place for their employees. So my dad worked for a company called Alpart, which is owned by Kaiser Aluminum. Yeah. That's an American company. They actually gave me scholarships to go to college. You know, I got my first car out of some of that money because I needed awesome. to get around. That's awesome. And it was all tied to his benefits. He didn't have to put a lot of this money himself. He just had to work there. And he worked there for since he was 18, 38 years. You know, so that's how he was able to build that pension. Now the 401k, which is not so uh, old. It's very young. It started around 1978. Um, hasn't been around that long. Hasn't been tested. Puts all the risk and the heavy lifting squarely on you, the employee. That's the issue. That's the How issue. can you have a job, a family, and then juggle managing your asset allocation at the same time? It just does not work. You don't have the time. And most people today, they have two jobs or two working parents and then the child in daycare. Yeah. That's the same case in my household both of us work and because i own my own business i have the flexibility to drop off my son leo at daycare and pick him back up but most people can't do that they don't have that luxury so learning is going to be tough no absolutely 
Now, in your personal opinion, do you feel like it's better in our generation? You know, student loan debt is a major, um, you know, is a major thing that we're dealing with. Do you feel it's better to start investing right away, building up your assets, or do you think it's better to take that investment money and get rid of your existing debt? Because a lot of people are affected by the student loans. You know what? I mean, I, I don't like that. I hate it. So I would say neither is better, though. It's circumstantial. So my, my client base are what we call the Henry's. So they're high earners or highly educated and not really rich yet. Yeah. Most of these people are focused on saving money. But let's say they're doctors, which I work with. I do webinars for them once a week. Um, they have really high student loan debt, you know, 250000 in debt. And they're, yeah, they're paying school for 1500 a month. I mean, this is a big commitment. Yeah. So I would suggest you pay that off as much as you can. But um, it's really just a balancing act. If you're disciplined enough to cut up your credit cards and, you know, start investing at the same time, I would say that you should do that. That might work. Yeah. Um, because time is your biggest asset. So if you spend this early years trying to pay off the debt and miss the early compounding years, it's going to hurt you later. But it all comes down to dis discipline and automation. You automate your savings, automate your debt payment. Hmm. And, you know, just know that high interest debt, uh, which gives high monthly payments like credit cards can be crippling and they will lead to, you know, heightened anxiety and depression for many people. So there's an old saying, lying rides on debt's back. So get rid of your debt, use the debt snowball plan, and you stick to it. That's it. It takes discipline. Discipline, it takes wise counsel, listening to the best of the best, and then having a little faith along the way. Now, tell us about the super alpha strategy. You know, you were talk, sure. talking to me about it before we started recording. and I do not want our audience to miss out on this opportunity. All right. So if you're stuck with a 401k, you can't give up not saving at all. Many 401k plans match every dollar you put in. Yeah. Take the match. Don't let it go to waste. You know. In fact, if you have a Roth 401k, look at doing that too. But the Super Alpha comes from uh, the all-weather portfolio designed by Ray Dalio. It's tied to science. I mean, right now, maybe $60 billion is in it. Remember, I managed up to 60 when you add my insurance and investments. He has $60 billion. <laughs> This guy is way bigger manages money for sovereign countries. I think maybe China might be one of them. So go to the best of the best. And what he's doing is he's marrying uh, the compound interest with actuarial strategy. So science meets compound interest. And those are the power or the cornerstones of building wealth. You have to take into account time and you have to take into account science, your strategy. And the asset allocation strategy super alpha is really balanced. I think that's why it works. You know, it's so balanced that it's hard for it to fail. And it's been working all um, financial turmoil. So if you if you are all cycles, so if you go through a trough, if you go through expansion, recession, contraction, it, it works. And so I say if you're stuck with a 401k, look into that and see if you can implement it. And it's an asset allocation strategy. So what is asset allocation? Basically, it's how you split up every dollar that you put into your investments, like your 401k. If you don't know what it is, you'll get a statement and there's a pie on it. Yeah. That's your asset allocation. And you design it that way. Now, I know talking amongst my friends, um, I hear this a lot when it comes to investing. Like, I'll start investing when I get a raise or when I get rid of this. I mean, many people feel like they need to be making, have a surplus of 50000 100000 to start investing. And I know you manage some big time money, but you know, you've told me that if you can scratch $5,000, which many people are, are given $8,000 a year to Costco, you're paying Costco, you can find a way to you know, scratch $5,000. They can start investing in building their futures and their family's futures. Absolutely. It's ironic that you mentioned 5,000, uh, 5,500. That's the maximum that you can put into a Roth IRA. Yeah. Anyway. You should put that away because it can actually double up as an emergency fund for you, meaning that 5,000 you put in our 5,500, you can take it back at any time because it's treated in what we call um, a first in, first out strategy, which is a, an accounting term. So the money you put in first comes back to you first. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about taxes and penalty on the money you actually put into a Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. So it's great. You put it away, have it there for emergencies, tackle your debt. Why not? I think this is a great way. And starting small is good i mean there are many people who write about this there's a strategy called save more tomorrow 
Yeah. So if 5,000 is all you have today, start there and then look at Save More Tomorrow, which allows you to put aside, let's say, 10% of your next raise. And then if the next year you get another raise, increase the amount to 20%. Because yeah. then you can commit to saving money that you don't have yet, but you're working towards having it so exactly. that you don't use it for some debt. Like you said, it's a discipline and it's a mindset. So now for, for our audience members that like what you're saying, um, how can they get in touch with you? How do they get more Andrew Forbes? Sure, well, you can shoot me a text message with your questions or you can call me 305-454-6289. Uh, I also have an email address specifically for, for this kind of work. It's andrew at andrewdamianforbes.com. Yeah. And then on social media, I mean, I use LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whichever works best for you. I'm oh. probably on there. I guess I didn't get into Snapchat yet. But after yeah. talking with you, maybe I'm going to start doing something like that. <laughs> no, but we'll put a link to the to, um, you know, getting in contact with Andrew at the bottom of this, um, this episode, of course. We can do that, right, Johnny? Yes, we can. Absolutely. Andrew, thank awesome. you so much for your time, my friend. And you know, we got to do this again sometime. No problem. Thanks for having me, King David. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have more. If you guys want to have more experts and you know financial education talks with Andrews, like, comment, share, and we'll do this again sometime.